resonant booming call of the ground hornbill is often mistaken for the call of a much larger animal, even that of a distant lion. These calls can be heard as far as three kilometers away and are made, like lions, to signal their territory. The bird's unique voice and size has protected it traditionally in many African cultures, where the bird is also known as a rain bringer, often being seen after the first rains. Sadly, as the older traditional reverence for the bird has waned or been forgotten, so these slow-moving and vulnerable birds have become easy prey for hunters. A few other factors in combination have conspired against the ground hornbill, so that it is now listed as critically endangered in South Africa. Ground hornbills have not made it easy for themselves to make lots more ground hornbills either. First, they only reach breeding age at about 10 years old. This darker youngster will only breed in about five years' time, after he has learned the ropes. Yet this bird is up there with the albatross as one of the longest-lived birds on the planet. They can live for, wait for it, up to 70 years. Which made me think, well, okay, they only start making baby ground hornbills late, but they sure have enough time to make up for it. But this is where other limiting factors come in. These birds only breed once every three years. Ground hornbills are cooperative breeders, which means the youngsters have a learning curve to go through, helping the adults to raise the chick before they too can one day breed. And the learning curve takes six years. Studies have shown it takes that long for a bird to learn how to raise chicks before it can do so successfully itself. The bird's reputation as a rain bringer is time honored. It is said that if one takes a ground hornbill feather and places it on the waters of a river, it will bring rain. Such is the power of the bird, the story emphasizes, that the feather must be retrieved from the water, otherwise it may never stop raining. Of course, the rains mean a time of plenty for ground hornbills too, with food in the form of snakes, lizards, frogs and much more. These huge birds feed on just about anything that crosses their path. Here they peck at roadkill in a national park. This has its problems as the birds move so slowly that road traffic is an ever-increasing threat to them. They will also scavenge off larger carcasses, such as antelope, where the opportunity presents itself. It looked like all the odds were stacked against these big birds, which stand about a metre tall. That was until a wild gang of scientists figured out a way to help them. Because ground hornbills only rear the first hatchling of two chicks, the second chick, probably a backup in case one egg fails, 
is ignored and wastes away of starvation. But the wild gang came up with another life going to waste in every fragile nesting site in the wild. Their answer is to steal those spare chicks before they die and grow extra ground hornbills under controlled conditions and double the bird's chances of survival. We're visiting a particular nest site here with Kate Carstens, field researcher on the Ground Hornbill Project. Kate is checking nests with two eggs and planning her theft carefully. The nest is made by Kate from a hollowed out dead tree, but placed in a tall living tree, as a natural nest in a dying tree creates additional risks for the survival of the chicks. Elephants may push over old trees, for example. We rejoin Kate and the team on the morning that she's due to harvest the second chick from a nest she's been monitoring to the day, the hatching of the second chick. An embankment across a riverbed. The mother flies out and Kate assesses. Perfect. Two chicks. The second chick looks about two days old. First chick looks healthy. I'm just going to take a photograph of both of them, just to show that what we found. Okay, excellent. The darker chick is the oldest, and already almost twice the size of its pale sibling. Reserve. We're here to meet a lady who has managed to rear ground hornbill chicks from one or two days old up to release in the wild more consistently than anyone else on the planet. Uh, he's, I think he's just on a monks. All the youngsters we're looking at would not be alive if it weren't for the work of the team. And this success echoes the conservation imperative, make every ground hornbill count. From here, we're going to watch the release of the chick into a wild family. This morning, we're at the home base of the Ground Hornbill Project, Mabula Game Reserve in South Africa. With luck, we'll see the start of a new Ground Hornbill family in the wild, with the introduction of a new alpha female and the new sub-adult to the wild family already living here. The family is headed by Storm, the alpha male, and he has an urgency in his step today. For the new female and young male are to be released hopefully into his care. The young male, his name's Adkar, he was harvested as part of the harvest program. He was taken to Loscorp Dam Nature Reserve where Delisha Gunn reared him. He's quite a special chick, he was the first chick that we've tried to rear on an experimental point of view, he's quite special. And then the female is a wild caught bird from the Hoodsprate Endangered Species Centre. And she was a wild bird, she got kicked out of her group, her natal group. So she spent the last three years kind of hanging with the group, decided to move her here and see if she would accept the role of alpha female. On the day of the release, the three wild birds, the three boys, press around the aviary, hoping to unite with the newcomers. The waiting is almost palpable. He's a rehab bird. He, the rest of his group was poisoned near the Zanin area. And 14 years, he's accepted a number of new birds into his group and put a lot of effort into training hand-read, naive hand-read birds to, for them to go on and be decent wild birds. So the rest of his group was poisoned. He ingested some of the poison, but Moholoholo, the guy. So he's been the alpha male here for the last 14 years. He's sired two youngsters out of this nest. And yeah, so we've been... Storm makes regular food offerings to the female in the aviary 
and she in turn greets him through the mesh. The next bird is Janowski, another bird harvested from... And then the young bird is quite a special story. His mother was the original alpha female of this group. She was one of the very first hand-reared birds and she was really tame and human imprinted and unfortunately during the breeding season when her any humans around her and had taken to chasing vehicles and things, she ended up getting killed by one of these vehicles while managed to save the egg, get it through to Pretoria for incubation and then on to Delicia for hand-rearing and yeah, we were able to put that chick back into the group. Bush school. A bush school yeah, where you're yeah. teaching them. Well, we, we have, if you have a, a one wild bird in a group and if he has just three or four years of wild experience, he doesn't have to be a mature adult, that's enough. Things like black mambas, boomslung, puff adders, and so, you know, as a naive. And so we rely on this alpha male to do all the mentoring. And I would think that quite a nice snake in his mouth. Yep. Finally, the time came for Lucy to release the two newcomers into the wild and hopefully into the care of their new family. Lucy mimics the ground hornbill call mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as she drops some tempting food for the two mm -hmm. inside the aviary, mm -hmm. leaving a trail to lead them outside to freedom. The wild birds move in as soon as Lucy leaves. Storm has the mandatory food offering in his beak. And the female notices. While the younger bird starts feeding on the food trail Lucy laid, Storm waits patiently. And Janowski actually goes inside to his new family. While Storm waits, Janowski perches with Kapama, the female, and very encouragingly starts preening her. Storm then turns and leads the way to freedom, walking deliberately away from the aviary with his food offering. The youngest wild male, Mokaikai, Kai, follows. Epgar, the new young male, is hesitant but the female Kapama takes the lead and walks to freedom. The youngest wild male, Makaikai, Kai, oblivious of what's happening behind him. The first steps to freedom are tentative, but soon everyone is involved. And the two older males and the new female take to the air for a grand tour. It's almost as if Storm is saying, this is our home. Hope it meets with your approval. Yes, yes, yes. It seems it does, for the new female chooses to land at the nest with them too. Storm starts making preparations to show her the nest. And she is no doubt curious. Birds go on a few more aerial sightseeing tours, and then Storm decides to walk the new family through the estate, where the family spends much of its time getting to know each other and finding food together. And Lucy monitors their whereabouts like a protective mum. For Lucy, the sight of not three, but five ground hornbills foraging together in the wild says her job is done. Now, 
as Delicia says, the family has got to do their ground hornball thing. <laughs>